Okay, um, I had to rebuild a, some stuff here, so after I had my crash. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the Extrude Boss base now, and um, I'm picking this spot right here um, because I need to extrude this out. But notice what I'm going to do is, normally we do this all the time. We say how much we want it to be, and we just kind of click numbers and make it happen. Well, when I'm in this kind of assembly thing, I have an advantage. I can literally treat everybody as if they're real. And so I'm going to say the direction I want to go and where I want to go is up to a surface. And notice what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click the back of that motor and ta-da, it went right up to that surface. And over here, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to say another extruded uh, boss base. And I'm going to use that same sketch, um, base sketch here. Um, oops, it's created by a new sketch here. Hang on. And let's see, hang on. I'm going to go back here and do my um, extruded boss base. And I'm going to go get it from the uh, system here. There's my sketch. And I'm going to take that same thing. Notice I'm just leaving that hole in there for the moment. And once again, I'm going to say I want to extrude, not blind, but up to a surface. And now I'm going to pick this motor. And boom, I got that one. Okay. And look, look how fast this is happening. I mean, I've got, you know, by the way, go, uh, to get out of this mode where I'm editing this component right in the uh, assembly, I'm just going to add a component. And you'll notice my motors show back up. And because I'm basically making a thing looks like the Sphinx here right now. Um, and that's all cool. And I'm going to go ahead and save all this here for a moment. Can't save it all. I'm letting all my parts be internal. I got to tell you about that stuff later. In fact, I got to relearn it myself so I can tell you about it later. Uh, but here's the deal is um, to, in order to get one more level out of this. Now, notice that I have a printable frame right now. I think this is almost the right length. I'm not sure. But I could print this part, okay? And it makes sense. I can lay it on its side right here and print all the bottom. And guess what? If I had detachment points, I could put my motors right on there and ta-da, my motors were hanging in space where I wanted them. Remember, I just put these wherever I wanted them. I told it how, how high, how wide, how far, whatever. But we're going to do one more thing, and um, we're going to um, just open this part up, okay? That's the part we just made, and we're going to open it up, and there it is by itself. And we're going to do something interesting. It's, um, it's called an insert. Um, I believe it's part. Hang on. Pause for a minute. Had to refresh myself on that one. Uh, here we go. I'm gonna. I basically have a part open, and I can do this with any part. And I'm just gonna click it, and I'm gonna come up here and insert. And I have a thing called mirror part. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say break the link to the original part to start. And um, hang on. Um, let's go right there. Break the link to the original part, and if I do this, you'll notice suddenly I have a mirror in the original part. And it's an exact mirror. So I'm going to save that as um, I'm back here in ECM 110 here. I'm going to save that as I've lost my folders here. Building space demo. And we're going to save it as the um, frame mirror part. Let's save. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'll close the extension out of there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in, I'm going to say insert component existing part. And i got to go find this thing. There it is, frame mirror. And I'll put it there. And I guess you kind of know what we're going to do next. We're going to mate it. I'm sorry, mate it. Not to there. We're going to mate that to the other side. And if that happens, and in order to get the tops lined up, we'll mate this with that. Coincident mate. And we'll just pick anybody on the end here and line them up. Okay. Now, there you are. You have just completed a frame. And if I printed these two, 
I can go and put my motors on there and these things are in space and they're kind of like ready to go. And these are the tricks that you can use to um, literally build stuff in space. I mean, you just put it where you want it using the frames. We could use angles on the frames to create much more complex geometry. But in the end, that's all we had to do to make uh, a part uh, that's pretty complex. I mean, notice that we didn't do any measurements. All of this fits exact. The exact extensions are going to be printed to make the motor be right where we wanted it, out, out in space here, see? And uh, the relationship um, from the side here is what we expect. We have, you know, there's a clear, you know, X distance here and a clear Y distance to that shaft there. Uh, the background here is the beginning of our frame. I mean, if we were, I just sketched that out really fast, but if we're trying to make a rabbit, we would have had our silhouette of the rabbit, right? And we'd have built the frame, we'd have drawn the frame inside the rabbit. You remember the techniques we learned last week uh, to create the um, lofting uh, either by surface or standard extrude and shell, uh, we can create the body for this now. We have a lot of ways to work with that. Um, I could create a plane here. I can create a plane here, another one here, here, and here, and uh, create my outline of the body part and uh, do all that. Just take another look here. So just fast review. Um, we, um, we, let me uh, condense some of the stuff over here. We have uh, some parts that I should turn off visibility on. We started with um, just planes, okay? And then we dropped in motor one. We made it to the, frame, the, the planes themselves. Um, then we um, added motor two. And once again, it's just made it to space, right? It's not any connecting it. And what we did then was we created the frame by converting these edges over to the sketch. We were able to build all of those or sketch all those components out. And then we also used our features to actually take our part and extrude right up to the components we're trying to get to. We didn't have to do any measuring. I didn't. I didn't say. I don't even know what this dimension is. Let's go ahead and read it. I, I don't even know what it is. It's um, not reading right there. It's trying again. It's an inch. I didn't know that. I didn't have to know that. The system automatically calculated. How about this one? What's this one supposed to be? Let's do a measure here. Yeah, it says it's a two inch. Okay. So I didn't do any of that. I didn't have to do anything. All I had to do is put my parts anywhere in space that I wanted to. Uh, ironically, remember that one I did the uh, extrude the surface? This surface could have been at two different angles to this plane, and one angle and another angle, actually, all at any angle, and it would have extruded right to that plane. So this is a very powerful technique, and we'll try to do this in class yet, and so you get a little more uh, time on it. Hopefully that helped.